Well, hi there. We're looking forward to the Fairy House cards. We'll start with the one o'clock that uh, 10 furlong maiden for fillies. And Astadash were really catching the eye after finishing third behind Ennis Diamond when 100 to 1 last time out at Leopard Sound. Slight concern about the form of the yard that they haven't had a winner since the return of racing from lockdown. So I'm going to side with Rosa Albertine for Dermot Weld, who still has an Irish Oaks entry and uh, she could build on some really nice form from last year in the opener. The second race of the day starts at 1.30 and while the likes of Yulong Magic Reef and Hosier will be expected to step up on debut. One I kind of fancy just on pedigree and sales price is Nordic Aurora. Maybe might not be 100% on debut but could be better than these. Cost 260 grand as a yearling and is related to uh, group winners and a group one winner as well in first defence. So I'm with Nordic Aurora for Joseph O'Brien in the second race of the afternoon. Fascinating race at two o'clock. The download the Boyle Sports app handicap. Probably the pick of the racing this afternoon. Uh, four handicapped debutants, three last time out winners, but a couple that might be slight prices are Karandi for Mick Halford and also Cabo Hills for Joseph O'Brien, who has a fascinating pedigree. I'm just going to side with Can Karandi rather for Mick Halford to step up on that Dundalk debut. At 2.30, it's a fascinating 45 to 65 Division 1 uh, over 7 furlongs. Mul Mulal Sal for Richard O'Brien will look to have a, a better run than last week over course and distance. But Master Speaker drops into this grade for the first time in his life. Now rated sub 65, having once been 101, perhaps he can uh, do the business at half past two, recapture some past glories. At three o'clock, it's not the great, greatest race of all time, Plenty of trainers will fancy theirs with chances, including the likes of Tribal Path is another dropping down the handicap. But I'm going to side with a previous course and distance winner in Lenovia, Leanne Breen, of course. Already had a winner since the restart with Parker's Hill, and she'll be hoping that Lenovia, one of her first purchases, can do the business at 3 o'clock. There's a six furlong handicap at 3.30 where Plough Boy and Baby Power of course finished sec first and second over course and distance last week. They'll be dominating the top of the market but I really like one here called Powersville uh, from the Mullins Yard. Finished third behind much better horses than these. Drops to calmer waters this afternoon and Powersville, the filly, makes for one of the best bets on the card. We close out with the two divisions of the Mile and Five, 45 to 65. Plenty of these you'd imagine have uh, ideas for the Goy Festival and the jump season which gets underway shortly but uh, in the four o'clock Princess Zoe looks to be a worthy favourite there having finished second when last seen but I like the chances of forget the surprise this uh, getaway mare from the owned by the Madden family uh, no I'm Madden on board nine stone ten must be close to his bottom weight they unfortunately lost uh, their stalwart and shake the bucket recently so forget the surprise could one run a big race at an each way price it'd be nice Philip for them and the closer in the card uh, again you'd imagine lots of these have one eye on Goy, particularly the top weight Camlan, who looks nicely handicapped but uh, might strip fitter for the run. One I can't let go though is Appian Way, ludicrously well bred, down off a mark of 44 for Charles O'Brien, this fellow by See the Stars. Can't let him go unbacked right down near the bottom of the weights. But my best bet of the day, that's Powersville in the 3.30. Hope you enjoy and hopefully we'll all be back on course at Fairy House very soon.